So tonight I'm going to give a little bit of a walkthrough through a web-based program called Comic Master. Uh, basically what Comic Master is, is a program for creating a graphic novel. And I'm just going to take you through a little tutorial. I was kind of surprised to not find one online already. Um, so this is basically just giving you some information about what the program is. You can click OK and it will bring you through to the main screen. And from here, uh, there's some information on additional resources. Unfortunately, the website that should have lesson plans and a lot of other great resources is not currently working. So hopefully by the time you get around to using this, it will be back up. So we'll just X out of that. And this tells you a little bit more about the features that are available in Comic Master. So I'm just going to click Next, which means I accept the terms and conditions and it brings me into the program. Uh, up here you have a little mp3 feature so you can play different music channels while you're working on your comic. Uh, we're not going to do that right now because I'm trying to talk to you but I will just show it to you so you can see how it works. So we're going to listen to the hip-hop channel and if we click here it should play. <laughs> So that's the hip-hop channel and you can click these little arrows here if you want different stations. Uh, so in order to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is set up our comic rows. So we do that by just dragging and dropping. Uh, everything in here is pretty simple to move around. Uh, and it gives you a lot of different options by checking more or back. Uh, it'll also give you some preset pages. If you don't want to set up your own four rows by scratch, you can use one of these. And the nice thing about these is that some of them are longer um, and will actually go across a couple of different rows. So for now, we're just going to use the presets. And I'm going to do some pretty big ones so you can see what I'm doing very easily. Uh, put that one there and do one more for the bottom. Let's do that. Okay, so now that that's all set up, I can hit done. Uh, and once I've gotten started with this, one thing that I do want to make sure I do is save it. Now, I can't save it if I don't have an account. So if you don't have an account yet, you can create one by hitting login right here. Um, because we do have an account, we're just going to click that. Uh, you could sign up for a new account right there. So I'm going to log in and just type in the email that I use to register and my password and submit and I have logged on successfully so now I can actually start saving my projects and by saving your projects you're able to access projects that you've worked on in the past so um, by clicking on that you can see that these are some projects that I've worked on previously and I can delete them by clicking on the little trash can um, I can't undo that so I want to be pretty careful uh, so now going back to the main menu uh, we get to start playing around with the assets, which is actually the fun part. So I'm going to start with some backgrounds. Uh, there's a cityscape that you can use. And the nice thing about this is that within each frame, you can actually move it so that it's set up exactly where you want. And you're getting the correct view uh, for each frame. There's a little bit of an office scene here. Um, we can have a, the interior of a car that's being driven and a, a city street what else we've got. Um, over here is a forest and a nightclub. So now that we're done with that we can save again and go back to the main menu. Now we can start working on our characters and it gives you a couple of characters to choose from. Uh, I kind of like this lady here so I will move her in if I can get it to grab someone. Uh, let's go back to the main menu here, character art can be a little bit buggy sometimes. So now that we've selected this lady here, I can just drag her in wherever I want. And uh, if you click more, again, it'll give you some different poses that you might not have had before. And it works the same way as uh, the previous screen. So you can move her within the frame anywhere you want. It will crop her appropriately based on the frame that she's in. And you can also choose some different I guess she's kind of little, so she's going to sit on that steering wheel. You can also choose different characters. So if I want to have a dialogue between her and this gentleman here, um, I can just pull him into the frame and maybe he's my villain um, and, and do it that way. Uh, let's see what other characters we have. We've got this guy here. He's kind of like the hipster superhero. And then we have this one here. And She's got some 
crazy outfits going on. So we'll just put her up there. Um, okay. So now that I've filled in all the screens that I want to use, I can start putting in speech bubbles. And our speech bubbles are also very easy to edit. Um, you just pull it into the frame that you want, and if you zoom in using these arrows here, it'll say select me, then click T icon to edit text. So I'm going to do that so it's selected, and now I click T, and it'll just let you fill in whatever text you want. So uh, for this gentleman, he's going to say, holy moly. Uh, and there it is, and you can zoom back out and see how it looks in the frame. Uh, you can go back to the main menu and there are also thought bubbles. So this gentleman is quite pensive over here and it works the same way. You just click the T and he is thinking. So he's going to be saying, hmm, okay. And our text shows up and there are also um, caption boxes. And these are the boxes that would go to just fill in some narration or some text that isn't actually associated with a particular character. So that works the same way. Make sure it's selected and go to the T. And uh, this caption box will say, let's see, OMG, forest. Okay. So now that we're all done with our text, um, we can add special effects. And special effects are pretty cool. Um, they can just get pulled in like everything else. Um, let's see, we've got squinch, that sounds pretty good, uh, sound it makes when she snaps, and here's tinkle tinkle, I guess that's maybe the sound of when she punches, so we'll pull that in. Um, and the last thing that we're going to want to add are props, and it gives you a whole bunch of props to choose from, so, uh, let's see, I'll give him some flowers, he can be pensive about a little bit of a still life here. Hmm. And um, let's see what else we have. A laptop. She can, we'll have her punch a laptop. Now, as you can see here, my laptop is in the foreground and it's covering the text that I put in previously or it's covering my character. We can keep it that way or we can actually move it by using these buttons here. This will move the object behind anything that I have um, currently in front of it. So now see it's behind Tinkle Tinkle and we can't see it anymore. And I can also use the green one to move it back in front. Um, we're actually just gonna keep it behind. So I'll move it back again and move it right here. So she is punching that computer. She is very mad at it. Uh, she thinks computers are dum de dum dum dum. And this young lady wants a telephone here. Uh, and we'll give this gentleman a cup of coffee. She's a little thirsty. Okay, so now that we're done with those props, we have finished our page. If we wanted to add an extra page, we could do so by clicking New Page. For this project, we're just going to use one, so I'm going to save it. It's a little bit slow tonight, so just bear with me. Oh, well, we actually have an error, so we'll try one more time. It's the first time I ran into an error with it. Okay, well, since we're having an error, maybe we'll just try to go right ahead and print. But normally, when you click Save, it actually will work, and um, you won't have to enter a file name or anything. It'll just save it alongside your account. So we're going to just go straight to Print. And because you can't see my printout, I'm going to print to a PDF so I can show it to you on the screen. And we are going to name this Comic Master. Let's save that. And we actually have a folder for that. I'm going to replace this file I created earlier. And we should be all set with the PDF. So now I'm going to go to my desktop and show you what that looks like. So by selecting my Comic Master folder, here's my PDF. And here's the, the screen that we just worked on. This is my graphic story. Um, and as you can see, um, it shows up exactly the way we worked on it in the program. And you can zoom out. You can print it to an actual hard copy. Um, if we had used more than one page, it would just be uh, inserted like a multiple page PDF. So that's how that ends up working out. Um, and you can see all of the features that we added in here. Um, we have our, our text box, hmm, and she's on the telephone, holy moly, 
Um, and then down here is our, our caption, OMG Forest, and she's punching that laptop we put in, and you can see it's behind the tinkle tinkle here where, where she was punching it. So um, it's a pretty great tool. You should definitely check it out. Um, I would recommend that if you're using it in a classroom, you have students work on their storyboards before actually going into the program so that they have a plan of how they want to lay everything out since it could be pretty time consuming to try to formulate all of that as you're working through the program. But it's definitely a useful tool, uh, pretty fun to use, really, really simple with the drag and drop. And you don't need an account, which is great. So if you don't have students who have an email address that they would want to associate with the account, they can still use the program. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial and definitely check it out. It's Comic Master. Thanks.